Hey guys and welcome back. In this video we are going to set up the arm and fingers as well as learn about space splitting and a few more block components. Let's pick this up where we left off at the previous video. So far in our puppet we've got our local control, our COG, our spine, our leg and our foot. Let's move on and start creating the shoulder and arm. To do so I'm going to deconstruct of course. And I'm going to select the top of the spine module as my parent guide. And I'm going to select a free control to represent my shoulder. I'm going to call this free control shoulder. And this is going to be a left side component, just like we did with the leg. And I'm going to leave everything default for now. And I'm going to quickly place my shoulder guide. I'm going to place it roughly at the collarbone root position. That will do okay for now. Let's continue and build the arm module as well. I'm going to use the limb module, just like we used for the leg. I'm going to double click it with my shoulder guide selected as a parent. I'm going to call this arm. I'm going to leave the block side as left. And in the module settings, I'm going to leave it at base state, just like we did with the leg. I'm going to build the guides and let's see what happens. What happens now is that the guides have been created in the wrong orientation. Which brings me to another subject, the creation orientation section. Let's delete these guides and take a look at some of these settings. I'm going to reselect my shoulder guide and double click the limb module again. Let's take a look at the creation attribute section. We've got two simple attributes here that dictate the orientation that the guides are created at. The first one is the match parent orient attribute. This attribute will dictate whether we want to match the new created guides to our selected parent module. If we check this as true, that means that the along axis attribute will not do anything, since we're simply matching the orient of the parent. If we don't want to match the orient of the parent, we can choose not to do so, and then we need to choose the axis we want to create our new guides along. The default for this module is set to negative y-axis, which refers to a leg, but now conveniently we can set this to positive x, which will create our guides at positive x direction. So let's do that instead. Let's rename our module again, and leave everything default. Our new guides have now been created at positive x orientation, which is slightly easier to work with at this case. So what we need to do now is place our guides again. It's important to note that I'm treating the guide hierarchy as if they were a joint hierarchy. So as I'm placing my guides, I'm trying to keep my translates and orients as clean as possible. Of course, this cannot be avoided at some cases, but it is also important to note that we're going to clean up most of our orientations when deposing our guides, which we're going to do later on. So let me quickly place our guides. Once again, I placed my guides according to the model off screen. I've got my upper arm position, I've got my elbow position, and my wrist position, as well as my pole vector position, and the attribute host position. Let's construct our rig. So, as expected, we've got our shoulder control, which is the parent of the arm, moving the entire arm. We've got the IK handle for the arm. We've got our IK FK switcher, which we can move to FK. Then we can animate an FK. And everything looks to be in working order. Now, before we move on, there is one more subject we need to cover, which is split spaces. As you probably know, sometimes we need to split our translate space from our orient space to give animators more control. A good example of that is the arm FK behavior. Almost any animator will be used to working with split spaces for the arm FK. This is commonly known as isolation. The goal here is to be able to change the arm's orient space to the COG for example, while keeping the translate space on the shoulder. 
This behavior is very easily achieved using block. Let's take a look at our current state and see what can we do to create this isolation. Since I want to isolate the orientation of the arm to the COG, I definitely know that I need to add the COG to my space list. So let's do that just like we've done before. Gonna load up my space attributes and plug in my COG and update my settings. Let's construct and see the behavior. Let's move the arm to FK and see our basic state. Now we've got a simple hierarchy behavior, which is just an FK. Now let's go into the arm root space and change it into our new COG and see the result. Now, as I orient my shoulder, my arm simply stays put because this is exactly what I requested and I don't have a way of splitting my space into orient and translate. So how can we fix that? That's very easy. I'll go back into my module settings and all I need to do is set my split orient space attribute to true. Going to update my settings and reconstruct. Going to go back into FK. And now let's inspect the space attributes. Now I've got two of them. I've got translate space and orient space, which is exactly what I need. Now I'm going to keep the translate space set to shoulder and I'm going to change the orient space to my new COG. Now, as I orient the shoulder, the position is going to follow and the orientation is going to stay the same, which gives that isolation feel. That was very easy. Great, this is exactly what I need. Let's keep that and keep going. Let's keep going and start to create our fingers. Now, I could decide to only create simple FK chain for each finger. I can also decide to extend my FK chain with another bone and create some metacalpal control as well. But I think we can do better with the meta module. The meta module is a unique module that will create an FK setup with automatic splay controls, which are tailor made for fingers and very comfortable to animate. Display controls can also be created for the second level hierarchy when paired correctly with FK module children. Let's set this up. I'm going to build my meta guides underneath the end guide for the limb that we've just created. I'm going to double click the meta module. I'm going to leave the number of guides as four for four fingers. Let's go into the module settings. I'm going to use a main control shape, which is a pin. And I'm going to leave everything here on. I'm going to go back into the mandatory settings and I'm going to choose not to match the parent orient. And I actually want this to go at the negative Z axis direction. Let's build the guides. The guides have been created and they've been created as a chain of four guides, which represent the four meta controls. Let's place those real quick. Once again, I place my guides off screen. I've placed each guide at the root position of its relevant finger carpal bone. Now to see how everything behaves a bit clearer, I'm going to turn off the visibility for the model. I'm going to go into my rig top transform and turn on the visibility for the joint structure axis handles, just so we can see some orientation without any children. Let's construct. Let's take a look at the main controls first. These are pretty standard. Each one controls its relevant meta joint and rotates and translates it accordingly. What I also have is two additions. I have two display controls. Display controls are going to rotate and translate the entire control chain based on display controls position. Display controls are going to propagate rotation and translation based on their position. For example, as I rotate this first display control, you can see that the rotation is gradually faded off as I go up the chain. As for the mid display control, something slightly different is going to happen. As I rotate this in and out, you can see that the axes for the inner and outer joints are being drawn towards the mid control. Which is quite handy for animation. Also for each control, I've got multipliers attributes, which can be changed and animated if required. Now let's see what happens once I add the FK chain modules to be our fingers underneath each meta guide. Let's deconstruct. 
I'm going to turn the visibility for the joint structure handles off and turn on the visibility for the model once again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an FK chain underneath each guide. So the joint chain will consist of three sections and will be used for each section of the finger. Let's do one and I'll do the rest off screen. I roughly placed my FK chain guides and now I need to keep going for each finger. I'm going to select the meta root and create another FK chain to represent a different finger. Great, now that all my fingers are now placed, I can construct again. Let's turn off the model visibility once again and see what happens. As expected, each meta control has a child which is an FK hierarchy. Great, but now we have our splay controls to be visualized a bit better. As you can see, display of the mid is behaving towards the mid control, and display of the A control is going to splay towards the index finger. What's even nicer about this is that the meta module is going to recognize automatically that there is an FK chain relation for each meta guide, and that will create the second level splay controls as well which is pretty cool. Great, it looks like we're all set up with the fingers as well. Since this video is getting quite lengthy, I'm going to set up the thumb guides in between videos, which is going to be a simple two section FK chain parented under the limbs and guide. In the next video, we're going to finalize our modules and guide placements learn how to extract customized control shapes, and finally start deforming our model. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. As always, any feedback in the comments is most welcome. I'll see you in the next video.